Hello, is this thing on? Hi friends, welcome to People's Pantry. I am Shay Spence, the food editor for People Magazine. If you're not stuck at home and you have an essential job that you gotta go out there, thank you so much. Uh, but many of us are stuck at home. It's not as easy to get ingredients as it once was. Um, we're all cutting costs. And for that reason, it's not you know as simple as just Googling a recipe and following it. Sometimes we gotta a little, get a little bit creative. So that is what I'm gonna show you how to do today, to use what you already have on hand. So today we are doing pasta hacks. And of course you can just throw out with a jar of red sauce, call it a day, but that's not why we're here today. We're here to learn and to do something creative and cool. So I rummaged the pantry. I found three ingredients that are gonna be the backbone of three different incredible pasta sauces. The first is a can of white beans. The second is peanut butter. We got the end of a jar of peanut butter here. Um, and the third is evaporated milk. One of my all time favorite ingredients that nobody talks about, um, but now we said it, now we're talking about it. So let's get started, let's go. My dad just snuck in here to get a snack. Say hi, dad. Hey, hey. dad. Hi, dad. Now the first pasta I'm gonna make is a fettuccine Alfredo, one of my all time favorite dishes. Um, like if I'm going to the Olive Garden, that's what I'm ordering. But usually it uses cream, butter, all kinds of dairy product um, that you might not have. And that's more expensive than a can of white beans. Now, we all have beans on hand right now. Everybody panic bought a bunch of beans and now nobody knows what to do with them. Everyone keeps calling me being like, Shay, what do I do with all these beans? Here's the deal, beans are great. There's a reason we bought them, because they're filling, they're cheap, and they last forever. You don't wanna just eat beans for every meal. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put the beans in a blender with some roasted garlic, put it in a tin foil packet, drizzle it with olive oil, roast it in a 350 oven for like 40 minutes. Then so we're gonna puree that with the beans along with some pasta water. Now this is a pasta hack that you should already know and if you don't, learn it right now. Every time you make pasta, save at least two cups of it for the sauce. So now what we're gonna do is, like I said, marry the pasta to the sauce in a skillet, heat them together to become one, Spice Girl stuff, come on guys. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it, come on with me. You guys gotta see this up close. So this is done and it's fantastic as is. Um, it's also vegan if you're into that sort of thing. But if you wanna add a little extra zhuzh to it, uh, and you have some Parmesan cheese, I highly recommend some freshly grated parm on top of this. And lots of black pepper, lots of black pepper. And you're done. So the second pantry ingredient that I'm gonna use to make just an absolutely beautiful, stunning, flawless pasta sauce is a jar of peanut butter. Now this jar of peanut butter is at its wit's end. Um, you know, you're scraping up the sides, you like don't know what to do with it, should I just throw it out? Do not throw it out, I will freak out at you if you throw it out. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make peanut noodles, something you might find at like a Thai restaurant, um, and we're gonna make the sauce right in this jar. We're gonna shake it up, pour it over some noodles. It's gonna be very, very cool, you're gonna like it. This sauce is all about striking a balance. You want it to be savory, sweet, tangy, spicy, all that good stuff together. So the peanut butter is already sweet and savory, but we're gonna just boost that with some soy sauce. Probably about a quarter cup of soy sauce. No joke here. Um, I have some sriracha. And that's gonna be the spice, obviously, about a tablespoon. Or more, a bit more. I like it spicy, but that's just me. Now, for tangy, usually I would want like a rice vinegar if we're going Asian style. Um, I don't have that, so I just have straight up this huge jug of plain vinegar. Um, so that'll do just fine. It's getting that tang in there. So about a tablespoon of that too. A little bit of oil, kind of get makes it glossy. Again, if you have some toasted sesame oil, that would be Really lovely here. I just have some light olive oil. Now the final ingredient is again, 
So that starchy water we used to cook the pasta and it's gonna go in here, it's piping hot, so it's gonna kind of melt the whole sauce together. I'm gonna use about a cup of it for now. Screw it on, shake it up, baby. See how it kind of cleared the edges there? Got all of that peanut butter off the sides. I'm gonna taste it just to make sure we have that balance. Always taste your food, by the way. Whew, spicy. I did go a little crazy with the sriracha. Great as is, you can serve it hot, room temperature, or chilled really good chilled. Um, do it like this. I'm gonna add a few more garnishes, just in case you have them. I'm gonna cook some peanuts in some hot oil so they get a little crispy, sizzly for the top. A Little bit of a sliced scallion and some sesame seed, just for fun, just to make it pretty, if you have it. Totally forgot to mention, I just used regular old spaghetti noodles here. You could use like a rice noodle or some udon noodles or ramen noodle even, but honestly, just spaghetti works fantastic. Okay, not to brag, but um, this is really the good stuff. It's creamy, it's crunchy. We have reached our third and final pasta of the day. Congratulations, everyone. Um, and we're gonna do a mac and cheese now. Mac and cheese, good old American comfort food classic. A lot of recipes call for you to do like a bechamel style sauce with flour, butter, milk, all very precious resources right now. My recipe, you just gotta have a can of evaporated milk, which shelf stable, stays good in your pantry forever, um, thickens beautifully, and we're gonna do it all in one pot on the stove top, um, sort of like your favorite prepackaged mac and cheese, but it's gonna be much, much better because we're making it, right? We're making it from scratch. Now I'm also gonna do something that might seem a little bit sacrilegious, especially if you're an Italian out there, I'm sorry, but this is really an American dish after all. Um, and I really like to cook it this way, which is where I just put the pasta in a cold pot and then cover it with cold water and then bring it to a boil. Just enough cold water to cover and that creates the backbone of the sauce. Again, we're getting that starchy pasta water thing going. Are you noticing a theme here? So at this point, the water is boiling. The pasta is actually releasing its starch into the water while also absorbing the water itself, thus creating the backbone of the sauce. See, it's a symbiotic relationship. I think that's what symbiotic means. It's been a very long time since I took a science class, but. You know what I'm saying. I drained off a little bit of the pasta water, but left a lot in there, then poured in the evaporated milk. And right now it kind of looks like pasta soup, uh, but that's okay, because it's gonna thicken when we add our cheese. Speaking of cheese, here we go. I like to use two types of cheese. Uh, one that's kind of like a nice freshly grated cheddar or whatever nice cheese you like. Um, and then one that's a processed cheese, like an American cheese or even, you know, that brick of processed cheese you can buy. Um, what I have on hand are these spreadable triangular cheeses. I'm sure you know them. I'm gonna throw a few of them in there and then add my cheddar cheese. So we have our creamiest ever stovetop mac and cheese right there. You can eat it just like this out of the pot, be the happiest person in the world. But I'm gonna take it one step further for my final trick of the evening and give it a little breadcrumb topping. Now the cool thing about breadcrumbs is, even if you don't have breadcrumbs, pretty much anything can be breadcrumbs. You can use crackers, chips, I've used crushed waffle ice cream cones before, anything that will give that crisp contrast to the creamy sauce. I'm gonna use some of my favorite crackers. And just... I have one last pantry hack to show you. Um, and you're gonna need something to moisten your breadcrumbs, like a butter or an oil, so they get evenly crispy up top. 
but instead of using butter or oil, which again, precious resources, I'm gonna use some oil from oil-packed artichokes. Now, anything that's in your pantry that comes oil-packed, there are mushrooms, you can even get for your fridge some mozzarella balls that comes marinated in oil and usually garlic and peppers and herbs. That's a huge flavor boost right there and it's something that you might normally throw out. Do not throw it out. Now we're not using the actual artichokes here, just the oil, the flavored oil to moisten the breadcrumbs. Bottoms up. Okay, not to brag, but um, this is really the good stuff. It's creamy, it's crunchy. You can taste the flavor of that artichoke oil. It all works really well together. I'm very happy with this. Um, thank you so much for joining me and um, see you next time on People's Pantry.